And now we want to take a minute to speak with you about the motif that we're running now called hybrid headless. So this is like traditional use. You've, you're, you're putting content in, you've got your repository, and then you've got your page management and rendering. So the, the CMS itself is actually creating the end HTML that's being displayed uh, to the customers. So you could say it, it's somehow phrased as um, you own the glass. So Magnolia is going right to the glass of the devices. But in a headless scenario, uh, the CMS is still managing the content, it's still letting people put content in, but it's no longer uh, delivering the actual HTML that people are seeing on their devices or in their systems. So headless looks very similar on the left side and on the right side, this is where it's actually delivering uh, to JSON and um, basically being used by other applications now, what are those other applications? Why, why is it useful for, for a company to, to go headless and skip the rendering and just get JSON? Well, one of the driving, one of the driving factors is that the front ends, uh, the devices themselves, have become much more capable, the front end technology. We've seen that this kind of started with all the mobile devices that were doing all, all the rendering, and you'd have a better experience if they were doing the rendering. And it's kind of kept on going uh, with all these uh, front end frameworks. Um, it's also beneficial because um, as these front-end frameworks have become sophisticated, it's not that they are, their templating is so much better, it's simply that uh, a developer can know that technology or a company can use that technology and now they can go ahead and use a new CMS, they don't have to relearn how the templating works and everything. They can just get the data from the CMS and use the techniques they're already familiar with. But it's not just about the devices, it's also about connecting with systems that customers already have. They may already have an e-commerce system that they've set up that's already um, running the website and they just want to augment that with some content or a banking app uh, or any existing system. And it keeps going. Um, a big part of the drive towards headless is that people see it as an opportunity to keep all their content from, for all their systems in the same place. So before, they might have had a bunch of different systems, one running the web apps, one running their social, and one running the website. But if they can use a headless system, they can have one system that is the single source for their content that they can use to deliver um, to all their channels as well. Um, so that's, that's basically the, the value of headless. So of course, I'm simplifying. There's more to it. But these are kind of the salient points. And what I want to made the case for now is that Magnolia 5.6 is great for headless. So we already had a solid foundation. We already have had the content apps for years. This is like a hallmark of a headless CMS. And we've already had a very, very flexible REST that you could pretty much do anything you wanted with. You could use Java. You could make your own endpoints. Um, you could certainly achieve anything. Um, but now we've just made it much easier. So we've got the solid foundation. Uh, we also have the Stories app that we recently delivered. And what's so special about the Stories app, um, I'll come back to that, but um, a typical headless uh, CMS, uh, uh, the drawback is that the marketer or the content author doesn't have very, very much creativity. They're simply filling in forms. Whereas with the Stories app, we've developed something that really lets you build an experience and yet deliver that in a clean, structured content way via REST. Then, of course, there's the easy REST feature that you've heard about that makes it much easier to, to get going uh, with delivering content uh, via JSON. And the tagging is also, you don't need it to do uh, headless, but it, it, it makes a lot of sense for many scenarios that you do with, with headless, because it um, Basically, you're working in much more of a content pool kind of way. So you have these content apps. They have a ton of content, of content. And tagging is a great mechanism to target certain content to certain audiences. One of the main pro problems or drawbacks with headless is that marketers can't really create an experience. They're just managing content. They're just managing data, which is still great. It's helpful. But you can't go as far as you can go with a full CMS. With headless, you're really losing it. For, for some applications, you're really losing one of the key benefits of a CMS, which is this empowerment of non-technical users. 
This is why the CMS has become so popular, is that all of a sudden, your, your technical staff can just set up the CMS, and now your business users, content creators, marketers can go to town. They don't always need to get somebody else's help. They can do it themselves, which leads us to hybrid headless. So this is what Magnolia can do. Magnolia can work as a traditional CMS. It can uh, we still, we can still use the, the page editor and get these like previews. Um, we can still work in a WYSIWYG context. What you see is what you get and deliver the HTML. And you can work in a headless fashion, delivering content via APIs. But the way I see it is that this is really just one product. So let's just put this left side together. And this is what the hybrid headless uh, means. So it's, it's one CMS that can deliver either as raw structured content via API or let you manipulate, create experiences with the page editor, and deliver HTML. What I want to emphasize is that hybrid headless is a great solution for empowering both uh, development teams so they can work with their tools of choice, they can work with the templating languages they know, and marketing teams can still create experiences and still have that live preview of what you see is what you get. And many of our customers, in fact, most of our customers that are doing headless are really doing hybrid headless already. I'd like to just, uh, to close, I'd like to show kind of two examples of what this really means, what this looks like. So um, this is taken from this blog post I did recently about hybrid headless, where it goes through four different scenarios. Let's just look at these two. Uh, on the left side, we have, this is like the simplest use case. It's, it's simply, I'm, I'm creating a website, and so I'm using Magno the full Magnolia rendering on my website, but I'm also sending that same content out to a mobile app or front-end applications, for example. Um, let's just take a, a look at that quick. So yeah, here's all this. Here's all the tour content. Let's let's uh, let's grab this tour content via REST and and use it in a completely different uh, front end application. This is what the US team has done with their sales demo. Um, I don't have the video loading here, but this is um, they they created a, a headless sales demo. It was previously based on the Java endpoints, which took a lot of time to write for Andre. So thanks for that work, Andre. But now it's been almost completely replaced using the new delivery endpoints. Um, so it was really quick to convert it over, just configure the endpoints, and now you've got all that same content being delivered in a totally different context. And here we see, like again, the marketing developer can work together. So the, de the developer is using uh, some front-end framework, and they're just getting the content via JSON. But this is interesting. This is a bit more sophisticated than the first one because the marketer is actually using the page editor. They're actually creating ex an experience. They're, they're placing components where they want them. And this structure of the page is then being delivered as JSON, as structured content. And then the developer can work with that structured content. And based on the structure, based on the layout, they can either present exactly the same thing that the marketer saw, or they can uh, display it in a different way. I'd like to close with something very interesting that's, that's based on that last thing I was telling you about, about the, 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 uh, somebody working in the page editor and that structured content making an app. This is taking it kind of, it's almost like the ultimate step of um, headless and traditional coming together. And that's the idea that your marketer is working with a WYSIWYG editor, but it doesn't need to be converted uh, between some Magnolia templating and some front-end templating. We're actually able to edit a front-end app. At, instead of using FTL, we're using Angular or React directly in the Magnolia page editor. And uh, this was presented by Adrian at the Unconference. And I just wanted to show you the latest state of that. And this is what I call an app builder. I guess you're actually not just building a page, you're actually building a front-end app in Magnolia. Yeah, so here we have the Magnolia page editor. And uh, we've got a bunch of components. This just looks like normal, but this is actually a React app. And I can go ahead. You can't see, but it's actually a, a, a two-column format. OK, now you can see it. So I'll go ahead and uh, add a new component into here. Um, let's do a text image, and um, I'm editing a React app. 
All right, and then I can go over here. Here's uh, the, the actual rendering. And this is a React app. And I'm actually able to edit it. And there's even another component that's, that's pulling from another content app. So this is really exciting. I mean, a lot of our customers have been looking at the, how they can, they can use Magnolia with these new templating languages. And this is a, a great example of the power of hybrid headless.